All right, so a mini Q&A session. And check this out, this P code. It's a very rockin' P code that, that you get issued in bootcamp, actually. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, a little update on my life. I'm a little bit under the weather. Uh, I was sick, so yesterday I didn't get to post a video. And um, today, this video, you're going to definitely hear me uh, stumble upon some words and <clears throat> uh, get get out of thought a little bit. But anyway, uh, it's, it's a little bit weird. I feel a little bit weird because I'm at home in Pennsylvania right now, but my my mind is still back at work in Virginia. So like my body is here, but my mind is at Virginia. So like, it's a weird feeling that that you, I can't really describe. You just have to experience it to understand. And then once this happens, you'll be like, oh, that's what, that's what Yun was talking about back then. But anyway, all right, let's try to tackle this. I've been trying to make this video for like two hours. But anyway, first question comes from Future Sailor Aponte and Martinez. Uh, in regards to personal glasses and contacts. So, uh, a lot of people, you know, wear their personal glasses coming into boot camp and also, you know, contacts. And uh, you are not allowed to wear them throughout boot camp because you do get issued uh, boot camp glasses. Like, you know, you get issued like all pure black glasses. And so you're not allowed to wear your own personal glasses. Uh, Classes or contacts, uh, you would put them in your A and B drawer, which is like a little storage device, storage space within your uh, bunk. And a lot of the times, like I know some of my friends, like still wore contacts regardless, uh, because RDCs wouldn't really know. Uh, but if you get caught, then that's uh, probably the punishment in the other hand. But uh, I know a lot of my friends at night, uh, when they were writing letters home, uh, they would wear contacts. Uh, because they didn't want to wear glasses, so uh, that's how that works. Second, second question comes from Future Sailor Hernandez in regards to wearing dress blues and white. So I'm going to go a little bit more in detail with that to answer another question later on. But you do get issued every single uniform that uh, that you need uh, in boot camp. Like everything that you see, uh, except for miscellaneous accessories such as like your rating patch, uh, like just like stuff here and there. Uh, they don't, in my opinion, they should have issued that out in boot camp. Uh, most of those in boot camp, but uh, I think they just do it. They make they sell it separately, and then you have to sew it on. Like you have to go to a person who can sew it on, and they have to sew it on, and they charge you, and that the navy provides that service. So like in my opinion, I feel like they make us go through these little hoops so they can make some extra cash. But <clears throat> like for example, the rating patch, um, it's for for LSs. It's like a little key, like two keys, like crossed, um, and that's like that's like three bucks. And then you go to your A school and you have to get it sewn on, and they charge like five bucks, which which is outrageous. Um, and uh, yeah, it gets expensive. And then you have to do that to all your uniforms and like all your other uniforms. You have to buy like little like markers that show you your petty officer. And it gets it gets ridiculous. It gets ridiculous in the price. But then again, we do get paid yearly uh, for uniform stuff. Anyway, next question go, comes from Ryan Zification in regards to can you have cable at A school? So uh, like... I'm not too sure if you meant like TV cable or internet cable, but for the most part, uh, they your A school is probably going to be ha have a TV with that you can watch. If it was anything like my A school, which I which I believe is probably going to be similar, um, and my A school provided internet, uh, but you had to pay for it. So like one mobile device with a decent internet that I could still upload a video was twenty bucks. Um, I know a lot of my friends who were gamers, you know, with a console or computer PC, they'd have to pay $50 for a much faster internet. So that's how that works. And they, I mean, it, it really depends on your A school, but I guess if your A school doesn't provide it and they're okay with it, if you really wanted to pay for it, I guess, then you could uh, technically buy your own cable. So next question comes from Future Sailor Kennedy in regards to do I know anything about aviation ordinance? Uh, any, the only thing I know I don't really I don't really have a lot of AO friends, but 
or I don't really know a lot of uh, airfare uh, air raids, but uh, I just know that they just load bombs and stuff like that. At the same time, I know uh, they work long hours during deployment, all aviation rates, and also um, aviation rates are uh, rank up faster from what I heard. So that's that. <clears throat> Next question comes from Mr. Greenleaf in regards to when do you wear your NWUs, NSUs, whites and blues in coveralls. So in regards to wearing your whites and blues, so like dress whites and dress blues. So whites will be more in the summertime, blues will be more on the wintertime when it's colder. So that's when you wear for like, you know, graduations, like huge ceremonies. Uh, you would wear your coveralls, like onesies. A lot of engineers wear that because it's much more easier for them to work in. Uh, and your NWUs is your normal working, like Navy working uniform where you wear it every single day. So with your boots and like it's the uh, blue camo that you normally see like your recruiters wear and stuff like that. And um, your NSUs would be more towards like a certain like ceremony. For example, uh, like not too long ago there was the you know promotion ceremony where like E3 people got promoted to E4. E4 to E5, so like <clears throat> you'd wear it, and then your like one of your chain of command would come up and then pin your like crow like on the collar. So that's when you wear that. And um, next question comes from Yogi101 uh, and asking me what was, in my opinion, worst part of boot camp. Was it uh, the gas chamber? So for me, gas chamber wasn't that bad. Um, in a, in a disgusting way, in like a human like mucus and a human like <clears throat> like fluid way, yeah, it, gas chamber was kind of bad, but like physically and mentally for me, what was the worst was there was a day when it's not the first day, but there was a day when they make you stay up, uh, they make you stay up for long long hours, and I just everyone wanted to sleep, but they don't let you sleep, and you, and you'll know what day I'm talking about. Uh, when, when you're in there but like I remember like I was marching like everyone was marching and I fell asleep while I was mar marching so I, I, I just woke up I was so surprised I was like holy crap I fell asleep but my body was still moving and then so that was that was a crazy day uh, but anyway going into the next question comes from Mr. Janiel 4 I think you already asked this question Janiel <coughs> but I'll answer it again <clears throat> and I already make I think I already answered it anyway but anyway uh, like how much time can you spend after graduation so if you're if your a school is in Great Lakes you would after graduation everyone leaves to their to their uh, compartment where you normally live after graduation and then if your a school is within Great Lakes you would take a bus Go to your next chain of uh, command, leave your stuff in there, and then you know you get to see your family, and then everyone would come back home before 1900 or seven o'clock, roughly sometimes eight, depending on uh, your instructors. Uh, so if your A school is in a different state, it's the same deal. You would go back to your compartment where you live, just drop your stuff, and then come back out. Or if you want, if you have your pictures that that you bought, purchased. Uh, you go back to your compartment, take your pictures, and then go see your family and say, hey, let's go out, eat, party, whatever. <clears throat> go sightseeing or buy an engagement ring. I know some of my friends did that. But anyway, so that's how that works. And the last question comes from unheard of tech in regards to do I know anything about AGs in regards to promotion. So. AGs, I don't really know much about them, but in regards to promotion, this applies to everyone. Uh, in regards to promotion, guys, uh, I, in my opinion, in my opinion, don't worry about promotion. Promotion, getting promoted, getting awards, should be the byproduct of you really enjoying what you do, like your job. You you really enjoying your job and you really working hard. That should be the like the normal. Uh, cause and effect like you work really really hard because you really enjoy your job and you get promoted and you get awards because of that 
Like you shouldn't look at different raids and say, oh, this, this, they get promoted really, really fast. I should join that. No, don't do that. Like I know some people um, who were nukes at one point. Like they came in uh, at nuke programs and then they did that. They went to the A school for nukes. I think it was like nine or a year. And then they get promoted to E4 right away. And after that, they just drop out and then go to a different rate. So that's some strategy that some people do. Um, <clears throat> and that's what some people do. But uh, in my opinion, uh, you shouldn't worry about like which rate gets promoted or which job gets promoted faster. Uh, promotion and awards, in my opinion, should be just a normal thing that just happens because you work really hard and you really love your job. So that is the conclusion of the mini Q&A sessions. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know my like thought and my how I speak isn't as normal because I'm sick. So I hope you guys <clears throat> have a great Navy day. <clears throat>